Hey, 4C Divers, welcome to Facebook Live. It is February 16th, 2022, and thank you all for joining us tonight for a fantastic presentation. We are super excited about the topic, so stay tuned. We will introduce in just a second, but let's go ahead and say hi to Tom. Hi, Tom. Hey there. How are you? All right. So, guys, if you're listening in, we want to know where you're listening in from. Go ahead and say hello in the comments section and type, are you here in Florida? Are you outside of Florida? Are you outside the U.S.? We want to know who is listening in and make sure you say hello to Tom. All right, guys. So, you know how this works. If you haven't watched a Facebook Live, well, you've got to make sure to register because if you register for tonight's presentation uh, by 645, we have a raffle and that's at the end. So you wanna make sure that you get in and register. How to register, you go to www.force-e.com and you go over to the event tab and make sure that you click the button for tonight's presentation on Eventbrite, register before 645. So that way I can gather everyone's names from there and put you into a random name picker. And tonight we are raffling off, da 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 a aqualung bag roller bag because everybody who travels needs to have a nice bag to travel with all your gear and your clothes so uh if you want to win this bag you got to make sure that you register all right guys so um in the month of february we themed it our travel month and that's because well we have never done it before and we thought, hey, let's go ahead and make a landing page and make um, some presentations and some other cool things to get you guys excited to maybe start traveling again. I know a lot of people stopped traveling because COVID hit, uh, but a lot of the different de destinations you can go for diving have opened back up. And Tom will talk a little bit about that in his presentation. Um, and there's also some guidelines that you have to follow um, when you are traveling to some of these destinations. Um, and we just want to give you all that information. So if you're looking to get on a travel trip, 4C does have a um, partnership with singledivers.com. And I will give you guys the information in the comment section so you can check it out. We have lots of trips planned uh, this year and next year and even in 2024. Um, and Tom's going to tell you a little bit about one of the trips that we have planned um, with uh, his company. But basically, uh, we like to give you guys all the information about travel. And if you go to that website, there's a nice blog about what to pack, what to expect when you travel. There's also a good video um, about things to know before you travel. And also, we have um, items that are on the travel page that are... Um, things that you can buy on our online store. So if you're looking to see what kinds of things you should take with you on a trip, go to our website, www.force-e.com, and you can check out that landing page and get some cool ideas about traveling, dive travel specifically. <laughs> um, and if you're here local and you wanna come into the stores, we actually have in store, we have our bags on sale. So come on down. And if you're looking for a bag to put all your stuff in to go on a trip, we have a sale right now until the end of February. All right, everyone's saying hello. Thank you all for tuning in. And I have a big announcement. So if you guys are listening in, let's hear it. Big announcement. Da -da 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 we have a soft opening, guys. Our Boynton Beach location. All right. So we've always had the three locations, Pompano, Boca Raton, Riviera Beach. And now we have Boynton Beach. So if you guys watched our Facebook Live back in January, we introduced you guys to the area uh, or to the store, um, but it wasn't set up. It's, it's there. We're almost there. We are uh, set up and we have a soft opening starting today. So if you wanted to go in and check it out, you're more than welcome, but we will have a grand opening um, on February 26. So we want to make sure that you guys have that information. So make sure that you are on our email list, our newsletter list, so we can send you out the invitation for our grand opening. So guys, right now we're open limited hours at that location and limited services. So uh, right now we're not filling quite yet, but we do have some inventory uh, that you can go in and check out and buy. And we can also schedule classes with you and take in service. 
um, do visuals for you. So uh, if you guys are at all interested in how that store is developed, then go ahead and come on down during those limited hours. Is everybody excited for Boynton? Give us a woo, Boynton! All right, guys. Thank you all for supporting us. We love you. 4C Diaries are the best. So, all right, Tom, are you ready? Couldn't be more ready. Okay, guys, we have Tom here. He's from Aggressor Adventures, and we're going to go ahead and let him introduce himself, who he is, and uh, what the Aggressor Adventures is all about, because they're going to be talking about liveaboard diving. So if you've never done it, this is a fantastic presentation to introduce you to what liveaboard diving is all about. All right, go ahead, Tom. All right, thank you very, very much, and welcome, everybody, to uh, tonight's presentation. And uh, I'm uh, very honored to be invited to uh, give you a little bit uh, what uh, Aggressor is all about. But before I do that, let me just uh, uh, introduce myself. My name is Tom Gephardt, and uh, originally I'm from Sweden. But, uh, you know, there was a time when I found out that there are other nicer places around the world with warmer climate, no snow, no ice. Uh, so I decided about 35 years ago to, to leave my, my old country, and I uh, moved to uh, southern uh, latitudes and um, I have actually spent about 25 years as a captain on ocean going vessels and uh, I would say about half of those uh, have been spent on uh, aggressor yachts. Uh, the longest time I actually spent on one of our yachts was the Cayman aggressor. I actually spent 10 years. Uh, I started out as a brand new dive instructor and I I used to have a company, a real estate company in Europe, and I sold it, and I had some money in my pocket, and I headed over to Cayman just to see if I could get a job as a dive instructor. Bought myself a bicycle. I planned on getting a whole bunch of tattoos and grow my beard and long hair and become a real beach bum. But little did I know that after just one week, I ended up on the Cayman Aggressor 3 as a crew member. And... Uh, Obviously, uh, we have certain standards on our boats, and you know I had to forget about all the tattoos and long hair and, and lip warmers or whatever we call them. So after about one year, I got my captain's license, and then I took over the boat. And that's how my, my career started with the aggressor. Now, uh, about seven and a half years ago, I spent some time in uh, the Bahamas as a land manager for the Bahamas aggressor. I also started up that operation. Uh, back in uh, 2012, I think it was. Uh, but I realized pretty quick that uh, I just wanted to become a landlubber. My wife also wanted me to become a landlubber after so many years. So uh, I was offered a, the uh, job to take over uh, the sales manager position for Aggressor Adventures. And I have been doing that ever since, which was 2013. So basically, what I do, I support all our... Uh, 2,000 or so resellers, tour operators, dive shops all around the world. And I do a whole bunch of uh, trade shows around the world as well. They didn't really want to let me go after I stopped working as a captain. So, um, uh, because I knew too much about the boats, I guess they saw that as an advantage, which is obviously it is. So that's a little bit about me. And uh, without further ado, if we don't mind, I can go ahead and start to talk about, first of all, what a liveaboard is, and then a little bit more in detail about the adventure that is coming up for 4C or E4 Scuba uh, later on, and that is the uh, Okeanos Aggressor 2 in Cocos Island. I hope everybody hears me okay. If you start to wonder what I'm talking about because you don't understand it, it's because I'm going into my, my Swedish uh, native tongue so just uh, stop me or type something and say tom we don't understand what you're saying questions i think we will take at the end because we want to skip all the interruptions so again without further ado uh, i'm going to start the presentation right now i hope you all get to see this now <clears throat> aggressor adventures was actually called the aggressor fleet many many years ago when it started up back in 1984 and uh, during the last few years, we have actually branded out or, or spread out. And we're now um, uh, actually three companies in one. We have the Aggressor Liveaboard, which is our main bread and butter. But we're rapidly expanding on our river cruises and our safari lodges. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that later. 
Uh, one of the reasons we are expanding that is because a lot of people, when they travel to the other side of the planet, they're not just going to go for a seven night liveaboard trip. They're also wanted to do something land based either before or after. And that's why we have branded in to, uh, to these other uh, brands. So again, we have our liveaboards and uh, currently we have, I believe we have 18 yachts spread all around the world. And uh, then we have our river cruises, and we started the first one uh, about two years ago, and that's the, uh, the Nile River Queen, which is basically, if you look at the picture there, it looks like a nice sailing boat, and it is actually a sailing boat. It doesn't have an engine. It sails down the Nile River for those people that want to explore some of the uh, ancient uh, sites that uh, Egypt has to offer. It's, it's absolutely spectacular. I was down there. Uh, starting up the Red Sea Aggressor 1 many years ago and I had the opportunity to do a river cruise and it was absolutely spectacular especially when you come to a place called Luxor where you get to see the tomb of Tutankhamun and, and all these other things it's it's uh, pretty cool and then a couple of years ago we started out our first safari lodge and that was in Sri Lanka and I had the pleasure to uh, have one of the Four Seas uh, uh, staff members joined me on that trip and I believe that he was very excited. I remember he got a lot of pictures of all the monkeys and elephants and, and stuff that we saw over there. And uh, we continued on from there to the uh, Maldives aggressor where we got to experience the Maldives, which was the first time for me. Anyway, so again, we have been partners since 1985, uh, which is uh, just basically one year after aggressor started. Uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, a compliment in itself. And yes, we are open. As a matter of fact, we have been our destinations that have been open and operating. Uh, it's about 65% of our fleet. And we have been open since August of 2020. Uh, there are just a few other places that we are still waiting for to open, but it looks like it's going to happen very, very shortly. So, liveaboards. I assume that we have some people that have never been on a liveaboard before. Uh, some of you have been, maybe not with us, but I can tell you that Aggressor is probably one of the leaders in the liveaboard industry. We usually are the, the ones that are coming with new innovations, with new types of services, and new destinations, and pretty shortly after six months or a year you have other liveaboard companies or individual liveaboards that follows and does exactly or at least try to do exactly what we're doing but again our experience goes back to 1984 and if you could think about it uh, it's a little bit different today today is basically a floating it's it's basically a week on a floating resort and pretty much everything is included uh, there are a few things that are extras and that is up to each and every one if they want to dive with nitrox for instance or if they want to have rental gear but pretty much everything else is included and compare that to um, 1984 when it all started it was basically camping on the ocean today it's far from it you are going to be pampered on a liveaboard like you are in a five-star resort anywhere in the world uh, all our boats are obviously constructed and designed with divers in mind, as well as snorkels, but mainly divers. Um, it's, everything is set up so it should be as convenient and easy for anybody to join us and do a week of diving. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, uh, the oldest person I ever certified during my years was uh, we had a guest on the Cayman Aggressor back way back when. Uh, she was a lady from Maine, and she was 82 years old. And to add to this, I can tell you that our vice president and the wife of uh, the founder of the company, Anne Hassan, she went to Belize the the um, uh, the summer before the pandemic hit with her mother, and she is 93 years old, and she did every single dive on that trip she actually earned what we call an iron iron diver medal for that and that is pretty impressive uh, and again we do have all these personal touches and attention you can for instance if you would like to have your coffee served to your stateroom in the morning 
at six o'clock. We will have that delivered to you. If you come up for a night dive and you're a little chilled, well, we come up with a hot cup of cocoa and a hot toasty towel straight out, you know, when you're coming from, from uh, your dive. Uh, going further, and before I talk a little bit about the uh, cocoa strip, some people they always have the question or a lot of questions and i've seen it so many times they're walking down the dock they're prepared to board the boat and they have never been on a liverboard before and if you can see my hand now they're literally shaking they're stepping on the boat and they have a lot of things in their head and that is who else is going to be in the boat what kind of food am i going to get am i going to be claustrophobic am i going to get seasick all these questions and what I can tell you is that 99.9% .9 of our guests, they, after one week, they don't want to leave the boat. We basically have to kick their behind to get off the boat. Uh, that is basically what we are transforming people, and a lot of them, they never return to a land-based resort ever after. So uh, we have two boats, I should call them yachts, in uh, Cocos Island, which is in Costa Rica. I'm going to show you a little bit later exactly where that is. This is one of our boats, uh, which is actually going to be replaced late, later this year. This is the Okeanos Aggressor 1. It's a 110-foot yacht and it holds 22 guests. And all the diving from both the boats are done from tenders. And if you look at the next boat, which uh, your scuba shop here, 4C, is going to travel on is the Okeanos Aggressor 2. Now, both of these boats, this one is a little bit bigger. This is 120 feet and holds 22 guests. And both of these yachts, they are sturdy, hardcore steel boats because the travel to get from mainland Costa Rica to Co Co uh, Cocos Island takes about 32, 32 hours. It's about 300 miles out in the middle of the nowhere. As a matter of fact, the island itself was the inspiration from the very, for the very first movie, uh, The Jurassic Park. It was Steven Spielberg that apparently had been there and he thought that was just like how I envisioned the um, Jurassic Park island. Now, if we look a little bit inside, what are we gonna get inside? Well, there are different type of staterooms. We have three different types. And obviously the most exclusive one is the owner suite. And as you can see on the upper left corner, it's a huge, huge stateroom where you have your private bathroom, which you can see on the right hand side, that's the big picture. And you have your own television. It's actually not TV, but we do have an online library on a little jump drive with I believe two or 300 movies. You're more than welcome to bring your own. You can just plug it in and watch your movies, you know, before you go to bed, go to sleep to get ready for the next day. Um, there is a bed package on board with a lot, a lot of information, helpful information. Um, there are obviously life jackets in the, uh, in the uh, cupboard behind you. There's a little set of toiletries. And these staterooms, they are being made up uh, once or twice a day. If you want to change your towels more than once every day, you just let the crew member know and they will take care of business. On the right upper side, you see the look state room and we have eight of those. And if, I don't remember exactly how many, but there is about half of them where we can actually put the beds together and uh, they become sort of like a, you know, if you want to have, if, if there's a couple traveling together. And as well, they have their own bathroom and shower. The master state room has a queen bed. Uh, it is for couples only. Uh, and as you can see, all the staterooms, not only the master stateroom, they, we, we provide uh, uh, bathrobes as well that can be nice and cozy uh, at the end of a long diving day. And then we have eight deluxe staterooms, or eight, yeah, eight, eight spaces, I'm sorry, eight spaces in the deluxe stateroom. I made a little error there, so bear with me. There's eight spaces in the deluxe state, uh, 16 spaces in the deluxe stateroom two spaces in the master and two spaces in the suite. Uh, going forward, this is uh, some of the areas that you will enjoy while you're eating. Uh, this is our salon area and our hangout area. You can see on the lower left-hand side, 
we have coffee maker there's always coffee on board you know that's one thing that you cannot live without coffee uh, on a boat there's also a refrigerator with cold uh, beverages there is always snacks uh, set up on the counter on the big buffet counter there and as you can see it has plenty of space for 22 guests um, and uh, the computer station we actually have I believe on the Okeanos Aggressor we have both a Mac and a PC so if you don't want to schlep around your own computer when you go on vacation you can use those for uh, you know fiddling around with your with your images that you took on your previous dive or stuff like that there are there is email service on the boat uh, I would not call that it's a perfect internet connection but if you want to you know send a message back home that everything is fine without sending you know 12 megabyte pictures it is available for you um, Again, there's a large television screen, and that's where we also do our dive briefings uh, before each and every dive. Uh, as you can see on the right-hand side there, too, you can see that there, there is uh, wine there. We do provide free of charge local beer and wine throughout your charter. If you would like to have uh, something stronger, then uh, we recommend that you bring something uh, yourself. But just keep in mind, like we should know as divers, the first drink is after your last dive. Okay, anybody getting hungry yet? I am, and I see this. And I can tell you that ocean, when you're on the ocean, you will always be A lot of people, they think that when they come up, when they come on one of our liverboards and, oh, I'm gonna do four or five dives a day, I'm gonna lose so much weight. No, it's not gonna happen. You are going to be pampered really well with the food that we serve on our boat we do have our own chefs that are gone uh, so you know done extensive training and uh, many of our chefs have worked with us for many many years uh, breakfast depending on destination sometimes it's used it's uh, served before your uh, first dive and in some uh, locations like for instance in cocos we serve it uh, after your first dive. And breakfast is always made in order. We have a little buffet set up, and then the uh, chef makes uh, every day something different. It could be eggs and bacon, it could be pancakes and, and, and sausages, or it could be whatever he comes up with. Every day is something different. Uh, buffet is what we serve lunch with, but during these times, we have actually had one crew member serving your your food on your plate from the buffet hopefully when this is all over we will go back to what everybody enjoys doing and that is pick your own food from the buffet and every day uh, there is something different i remember when i uh, was running the boats i had a theme every day one day of the week we had italian another day it was american another day it was actually swedish believe it or not and it was not only meatballs but every day is something different could be asian as well dinner is served uh, table side. You can uh, take a shower before dinner and uh, the crew will dress up really nicely and serve you at your table so you don't have to go up to any buffet or anything like that. Uh, and as I mentioned before, there is complimentary beer and wine on the boat. Now, one thing that a lot of people love and that is when you're, for instance, coming back from your first dive and here is a crew member coming out on the back deck with a tray of hot, fresh, baked, chocolate chip cookies, or it could be muffins or cinnamon buns or monkey bread or something like that. Um, and the same thing in the afternoon. If you're doing two afternoon dives, in between dives, the chef will come out with hot chicken wings. Um, it could be, uh, what do you call those uh, Mexican things? You call them, uh, not tacos, but yeah, something hot and nice to prepare you for dinner or if you have a late, late, uh, afternoon dive. Somebody asked me uh, uh, earlier today if uh, Aggressor provides dietary, uh, you know, we, if we, we can help with that. Absolutely. Depending on a little bit of destinations. If you, for instance, are allergic to peanuts or shrimp or shellfish or whatever it might be, uh, when you're making your reservation, you just let us know that, hey, I cannot eat shellfish. And then that information gets sent to the boat, and we will make sure that we will not serve you shellfish. Um, if it's if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, vegetarian is obviously a little bit more to accommodate in most destinations. Vegan is a little bit trickier. Uh, I would say in more 
maybe it's the wrong word, don't hold me against it, more civilized uh, areas of the world, it could be easier to get these things than maybe some other parts. I remember when I first went to Egypt many years ago and I wanted to have a bacon with my eggs in the morning. Well, I'm sorry, but that doesn't exist. So all these things can be accommodated to a certain extent. It's very important that you let uh, our people know what you can and cannot eat. And what I always recommend to people, even if you have notified, uh, notified our office, once you step on the boat, get with the cruise director or the chef and remind them because you never know if it disappeared somewhere in cyberspace, okay? So let them know once you step on the boat that, hey, you, I, I uh, was, you know, I informed the office that I cannot eat this or I need that or whatever. For vegans, if you really want to have something very, very special or even vegetarians, or even if you're a regular eater, if you really want to have your Swedish meatballs and you know that you're not going to get it, well, bring it with you. Nobody's going to stop you. Um, that is pretty much any, uh, everything about the food, but it's one of the better parts of your own, your whole uh, Liverpool experience. Here you see Jurassic Park, and this is the island where you will travel with if you travel with your group, and it's, uh, as I said, 300 miles offshore, and uh, you see that vessel that is anchored just right next to um, uh, Walford Bay, and you can see there's a beautiful beach there. And as a matter of fact, uh, we will, if weather permits, take everybody ashore one uh, morning or one afternoon, usually afternoon, and we get to visit the park ranger station, which you can see a picture of, or at least the entrance to it on the lower right-hand side. And uh, there's nobody living on the island except a few park rangers. And as a matter of fact, our two boats are the ones that actually, when they when they change their shifts, we bring the park rangers back and forth, as well as uh, provisions for them. They do have uh, some small gardens where they actually grow uh, some of their produce themselves as well. And uh, one of the most exciting thing, unfortunately I don't have a picture of it, one of the most exciting things when I went there both times, they have a big shed. It's almost like a huge barn. It's basically the size of a basketball court, and it's probably about 30 feet high. It's full. This is amazing. It is full of huge hooks, long lines, and nets, uh, all these kind of things that you know the illegal fishermen have been using, and they even either come drifting or the park rangers, they have they confiscated them. And it's an amazing view what they have in that in that shed. It, it's just spectacular. You see the lady there uh, in the bottom left. That lady is standing on a little hand bridge that they constructed out of all of these things that they collected out of the ocean. Uh, also, what you will be able to do, and I don't know if you can see my mouse, probably not, but on the right hand side of that beach that you see, the bigger beach, there is a trail. It leads up to the top of that one hill, and that is how you get to see the Okeanos Grasser Park in the bay if you look at the picture in the middle of the bottom. It's a pretty rough uh, trail. I mean, I was sweating gallons before I got up there, but it, it's well worth it if you get there. You're going to pass a couple of waterfalls. Sometimes you get to hop in one of those waterfalls and cool down, and there's also a lot of wildlife. The little island you see on the right hand side. That is one of the most incredible areas to dive. Basically, what we do uh, is we go on the outside. We, obviously, the diving is done from tenders. We have two large tenders. And we have one group go on the outside, on the right-hand side in the picture, and we drop everybody off right there. And they do the turn on the outside and come back through the, cha through the channel. And the other group, we drop off in the beginning of the channel, and they come around on the inside. And in that channel is usually where you get to see one or two tiger sharks cruising by. Uh, this this uh, little island is called Manuelita. And uh, if I go to our next page, this is where you have the dive sites over in Cocos. So basically, uh, the boat docks, depending a little bit on weather, but both times I've been there, I was in the uh, Woffer Bay, uh, where you see where you have the waterfall, you have the ranger station. 
So basically the boat is stationary. So the tenders will take you to all the dive sites. And if you travel to the dive site that is furthest away, which is Alcyon, right on the other side of the, the island, it only takes you about 10 to 12 minutes. So it looks like it's a long distance uh, on the map, but it only takes 10 to 12 minutes. And we do have fresh water. And uh, after you dive, there's also fresh fruit on the tenders. Now, some of the dive sites that I found incredible are obviously Manuelita that I just mentioned. And then there is one place called Dirty Rock. This is sometimes we have to skip it and come back later that day or possibly the next day because it's a place that sometimes can have fairly strong currents and not only currents but upwellings and downwellings. Once you go down to Dirty Rock, which is you uh, basically use your reef hook because you don't have any pretty corals like in Fiji or in the Red Sea. You hook, you hook yourself up, especially if you have your cameras, and that will be at about 75 feet. And you wait for the hammerheads to come in. And uh, they will, it, and hopefully nobody does what some people always tend to do. That is to swim out to get closer to the hammerheads. You do that. The rest of the group are going to be really angry because once you leave that area behind the rocks, the hammerheads, they're gone and they're not going to come back for the rest of the day. So it's really important that you stay behind that rock where you have your hooks in uh, because they will come up right and you can get some amazing, amazing pictures. Then you have the big Dos Amigos. Small Dos Amigos is very similar, uh, like uh, Dirty Rock. Uh, Alcyon is also one of many people's favorite dive sites. And again, you're going to see, you know, that's a good place to see um, uh, whale sharks cruising by. And they look like they're so docile and just, you know, slowly, like slow motion. Try to catch up with them. It's, you got to kick and kick to, to be able to follow them. So anyway, these are some of the dive sites. Manuelita is at least my favorite dive site. Unfortunately, because of what happened a few years back, uh, we are still not allowed to do night diving. Hopefully it will change in the near future uh, because night diving uh, is probably one of the most spectacular night dives you can do anywhere in the world. Uh, if you look on the photo and this picture, you see that shallow area right in front of the boat. It's about 50 to 55 feet. That's where all the night dives are done. We were done and hopefully will be. Uh, once you come down to the bottom, it's basically rocks and sand. And uh, you have your flashlight on, and within, I would say, two, three minutes, you're going to have 50, 60 white tip uh, leaf sharks just in between your legs, in between your arms, everywhere, chasing small little fish, which they feed on. And it's, it's a nonstop action. And I remember, I think it was my third time, third dive on the first time I was there. I was down there, and suddenly when I'm looking at all these little sharks, you know, hunting, and it's all exciting. You can hear people, you know, your other friends scream, oh, look here, look here. Suddenly I get a tap on my shoulder, and I turn around, and uh, probably within 10, 12 feet, there is this three-meter, like nine-foot tiger just looking at me. So I forgot all about the little sharks and just kept my eyes on the big tiger there. But it's a spectacular dive, and, and hopefully they will open it up again. It's nothing that we have control over. I was, every time I go there, it's a three millimeter full suit. That's perfectly fine for me, but keep in mind, I'm all the way from Sweden originally, even though I've been 30 years in the Caribbean. Uh, three millimeter is pretty good. If you're a little bit on the chilly side, because you know when you're going down to 60, 70, 75, 80 feet at Dirty Rock or Manolita, you can, you, can you, can, you can feel the change. And uh, so if you're a little bit of the you know, sensitive side, you may want to have uh, a five mil. Uh, or a three mil with a vest. Again, all dives are done from the tenders, as I explained. Uh, let's go to the next. So here is some of the things that you get to see. Uh, if you really want to know what they saw last week, the week before, or five weeks ago, or whatever, you can always go to our website where you pick the destination, and then there is something called, it used to be called captain's logs. But now we call them uh, adventure logs, I think it is. And you can go back, I think, uh, two or three years in time. So if you're planning on going in September one year, but you've never been there in September, you want to know what the water temperature was, you want to know what they saw, 
which dive sites they, they went to, that's where you can get all that information. It's all there for you to check it out. But again, big stuff. This is not a place where I would go if I was just certified and had 10 dives because it can be a little bit adverse. So if you have, let's say, 50, 60, maybe 70 dives, and I'm not talking dives in a, in a pool or in a quarry, but in the ocean somewhere, uh, then you'll, you'll be ready for this. Um, we are, our diving changed also because of what happened a couple of years ago, and that is everybody in your group, obviously it's not one big group, but we split them up, but in your group, you have your dive instructor, dive master from the boat, you will go down as a group, and we, you will come up as a group, okay? Um, so that may change in the future, but that is what we're doing now, just to make sure that everybody is safe and, and uh, enjoy their dives. You will also, apart from all the big stuff, look out for the frogfish. There's a lot of frogfish there, a lot of mores. There are the marble, um, marble rays, and sometimes they come in squads of 10, 15. They just fly by. So a lot, a lot of stuff. Everything is drift diving. So once you're done with your dive, bring your uh, sausage, your, your line, and you're going to drift in the big blue. And that's sometimes when you see the big oceanic manta rays and the whale sharks coming by. And then once you're done your safety stuff together with your group that you're in, you just come up to the surface and the, and the tender will come and pick you up. Uh, a lot of questions, obviously. Hopefully we can uh, sort of like get rid of some of these things going forward, but we're still doing it. Uh, when everything started about two years ago, obviously we had to start doing everything that everybody else is doing. Uh, we have temperature checks before boarding. We have, uh, depending on uh, where you're coming in from or which destination, on our website, we always have an updated uh, list with information of what needs to be done when it comes to if, if you need to be vaccinated or not, if you need to take a, a, a PCR, an antigen test, and all these kind of things. But we are taking care of everything on the boat. Uh, obviously, with increased frequency cleaning and, and desanitizing. Um, and obviously, uh, we are following every guideline that not only CDC, gives us, but also local authorities. Uh, some of the things that I mentioned earlier are self-service buffet are actually not in place yet. So you will have a crew member serve you the food from the buffet. Uh, we have separated the green buckets for cameras and gear. So basically now we rinse them off with hoses. That will eventually come back because it's much more convenient. Um, we try to use outdoor spaces more for our meals. Don't let this picture on the right-hand side fool you. That is not the Okeanos aggressor. Uh, that is actually the uh, Nile River cruise. But many of our destinations, we do have space and settings for outdoor dining. Uh, so basically, you can see a list here. I'm not going to go through each and every one of them. Uh, some of these things may change in the near future as well, which I hope. Uh, but we are really uh, concentrating on keeping our guests and crew as safe as possible. Um, here are some of the destinations that are open. As a matter of fact, Philippines, uh, Aggressor, which was supposed to start last year. I was supposed to go there for two weeks in the beginning to do some crew training, and uh, that didn't happen. So they have been sitting still for the better part of two years. But they are opening on April 9th with their maiden voyage, and that is a brand new boat. Not a refurbished boat, it's a brand new boat. Well, it was built two years ago, but it's now been used. Uh, the only places that are not open is uh, Cayman Islands. Well, it's open, but uh, they require a five-day quarantine, whether you're vaccinated or not. Uh, Dominican Republic uh, is open, but we decided this year, because of the uh, logistics, uh, to cancel the, uh, the uh, Silver Bank's charters for the snorkeling with the uh, humpback whales. But pretty much everything else is open. So uh, uh, that is pretty much every. And just for information, obviously, I want to promote myself. You can see yours truly in Sri Lanka at the uh, Sigiriya Rock, which is one amazing place to visit if you ever travel in that direction on our planet. So that is pretty much uh, everything I had to tell you. And I'm open for questions or anything else that you want to throw at me. So I thank you very, very much for joining me in this presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, thank you.
All right. We do have a few questions for you. Um, well, first of all, um, they wanted to uh, make sure that they have Chardonnay on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we're good. Well, you know, it is local beer and wine. And I know that the wine we have on the boat is coming from a winery called, oh, what is it now? It's called Tidal Wave, I think. I am not sure if it's Chardonnay or if it's Pinot Grigio, but it's one or the other, but uh, it's there. Okay. Um, and another person wanted to make sure if there was nachos on the boat. <laughs> hey, you are going to get mocho nacho. <laughs> you know, when you're traveling to Costa Rica, it's pura vida. And you know what? If you haven't gotten nachos by the third day, just approach the cruise director or the chef and say, hey, where are the nachos? Yeah, there you go. Hey, um, before, before the next question, let me tell you, this is an advice I have everybody that has never been on a liveaboard. One of the most important things when you get on a liveaboard the first time is never be afraid to ask, communicate, because look, it has happened so many times. Somebody has been on a trip with me, and then three weeks later, I get a letter from headquarters and my boss saying, hey, Tom, what happened here? They didn't have no warm water in their shower, in their cabin. I said, well, nobody told me. So it's really important, instead of sending a letter three weeks later because your vacation is over, what you want to do is get with the captain, cruise director, or any of the crew members say, hey, look, you know, I don't have hot water in my shower. Can you take a look at it? Then they have a chance to fix it before your vacation is over. That's true. Definitely. Um, okay. So I did know how to answer this, but I wanted you to go into more detail. They wanted to know if um, there was any training um, classes that you can do while you're on board. Like, so if they're not nitrox, they don't have the nitrox certification or if they, um, want to take a specialty, uh, what do you offer? Um, what agencies do you offer? We basically offer PADI and SSI. That's what we do. And uh, if you are already certified PADI, you can do a crossover or whatever. That's very easy. Now, it also depends on destination. Cocos is probably not the place where you want to do an advanced open water mm -hmm. because you're going to spend a lot of time doing your training and you're not going to enjoy the destination for all that money that you're spending. Yeah. But if you're not nitric certified, absolutely, you can do it in Cocos because it's no in-water training. It's basically uh, an hour and a half uh, theory, uh, and then uh, there is nothing that you have to breathe different or anything like that. It's just like you're just going to change your, your gas in your tank from air to nitrox. So absolutely, you can do that. Uh, but I would probably not you know, spend any time in Cocos to do that. But if you're traveling to any of the Caribbean destination, uh, it, Absolutely. You can, I don't know how many people I certified open water in Cayman, for instance, because it's a perfect place to do it. So what I tell people to do is get your classroom work done back home, get your pool work back home. And when you're coming down, we're just going to spend two days doing your open water checkout dives. And on the third day, go off and dive with your friends. So... Um, or you can obviously come to 4C and we can help you out. And if you make sure that you say, I want Nicole on this trip, I'll uh, make sure that I'm on the trip and I can do some of the classes. <laughs> nice, nice move. All right. They wanted to know, um, when you were talking about the dive groups, uh, how big are the groups? Is it like only six people? Is it 20 people? If you have 22 people on the board maximum, we split it up in three. That's what we we were the last time I was there. We were 21, and we split it in three groups. So basically, the first group of I mean, is it six, uh, six, seven? They take off, and the second take off, and then the third group just has to wait. You know, five, ten, uh, five, ten, fifteen minutes. They one of the tenders will come back and pick the, the final group, and you know, do that. So we split it up in three. But if you have a boat that is not full, then obviously you can split it up in two groups and you just, you know, it goes like that. Okay. Um, also, they want to know, uh, what if we have a non-diving spouse? Uh, what are some of the things that they can do on board? It's not a good place to go to Cocos for a non-diver uh, unless you have a lot of books, a lot of videos, and enjoy staying on a boat because there's no snorkeling allowed in Cocos. It's different if you had if you travel to Galapagos, which basically has or has very similar conditions and diving, 
there you're actually allowed to snorkel and we do also do two or i believe it's three hikes now on the islands here we only do one hike so it's going to be very boring for a non-diving person to go on this trip mm -hmm. So um, that's why some people are asking about like the pricing. Guys, we we, we can discuss pricing off camera um, because we have different types of packages for you guys, and especially with our, uh, you know, co trip running is the, with the single divers. Um, we have different packages for everybody. So if you are a single diver, you don't have somebody else that you can share a cabin with, that's not a problem. You can still sign up for the trip and we will pair you with another uh, person that has the same kind of, you know, sleeping patterns and habits. And uh, if some of you guys have been on a single divers trip, um, go ahead and uh, say hi in the comments and they can uh, let you know that uh, Kamala does a really good job at giving like a big questionnaire about who you are and how you like to travel. And she tries to kind of pair you with somebody else that's like-minded. So- um, Can I just add something? Yeah. I just want to add about the snorkeling and if you have a spouse that doesn't dive, you know, most places in our fleet, they allow snorkeling and it's great snorkeling. If you can think of Bahamas, Cayman, Turks and Caicos, Roatan, Maldives. Um, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of places if you want to travel with your spouse, whether it's the male or the female that doesn't dive, it doesn't really matter. Great places to do it, just not in Cocos. Yeah, definitely. Cocos is a little bit more, I wouldn't call it an extreme area, but like you were saying, there's lots of currents there. You should definitely have a little bit more on your logbook uh, than just a few dives if you're doing Cocos. But other liveaboards are great for some of those newer divers, things like you were talking about the uh, Bahamas trip is a great one. Uh, the Cayman's trip is a good one. Yes. So, yeah. Um, and then some other people, um, you guys are very, very worried about these dive groups. So let's, uh, Tom, maybe you can help. Uh, people are kind of a, trying to figure out what if different air consumptions in the group. And so there's somebody who's an air hog. And then, you know, do you have different size tanks for somebody like that? Um, what do you do for that procedure? Uh, what happens is that, first of all, if you're traveling as a group, I'm pretty, pretty sure that your group leader uh, knows a little bit about the... Uh, you know how your divers are who is the air hog who is not the air hog and usually it's the females they just can't stay down for the rest of the day compared to us guys but the group leader normally knows a little bit about how to to put them up in in the groups but that is also something that our dive instructors on our boat uh, takes notice especially in a place like cocos where you go down as a group and you come up as a group because you don't want to have an air hog coming up you know needing to go up after you know 25 minutes while the rest can stay down for an hour so again it comes back to communication communicate and in regards to tanks yes uh, we do have larger tanks but it's first come first serve basis and it's really important especially in a destination like that because you cannot hop on the island here and go to a dive shop and pick up some 15 liter tanks this has to be arranged before if you have let's say you have 10 people that wants to have the 15 liter tanks or the one with 20 cubic foot then that needs to be arranged in Punta Arenas, where you're going to board a boat. And uh, I believe that we have, I would have to check that. I think we have four of the larger tanks. So if there's more people, uh, and we do charge for it. I don't think, uh, I have to check on the website. I don't have all the pricing in my head, sure. but it's on the website. But it is available with bigger tanks. The only thing that we do not uh, accommodate is side mounts. Uh, because the, the boat is not set up for, for that. And the same thing with rebreathers, because if you have a rebreather diver that stays down three hours compared to a regular diver stays down one hour. Yeah. Um, and talking about the tanks, uh, just to make sure everyone knows that you do have nitrox on this particular trip, right? Absolutely. It is a charge for it, but it's available. And uh, it's a flat charge for the uh, entire week. And um, yeah, we do have um, and then when you're talking, you hit a point there, you talked about rebreathers, you've talked about um, side mounts. So, um, you know, if you are somebody who likes to do technical diving, um, do any of the aggressor boats um, have the capability to have technical divers on boats? Yes, but it cannot be for a small group. It has to be a full charter. Okay. And uh, we can do it in Cayman. We can do it in the Red Sea. We can do it in uh, on the Philippines aggressor. 
And that is pretty much it. Uh, let me also mention about the side mount. You can use a side mount, but only with one tank. So you have to put counterweight on the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, good to know. Cause we do have a big technical diving community here. So if you guys want to do a dive live aboard tech live aboard, uh, we have our tech instructor, Greg, who just started doing our tech dive meetups. Uh, he's putting together one every month in this area. Um, if he can get you guys all to, uh, pick a destination, maybe we can get one, uh, put together for you guys. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll task Greg with that one. <laughs> so Greg, if you're watching, you got to pick a, a live aboard for all of your tech diver friends to go on. <laughs> um, okay, so another um, question when it comes to gear, um, people are going to ask the question about uh, you're bringing your own gear, um, but you guys do have some rental, I'm guessing, uh, in case you didn't you didn't want to fly with it. Um, but the biggest thing was, uh, you know, there's rules about certain areas about wearing gloves versus not wearing gloves. Um, what is your guys's rule there? Yeah, also, depending on destination, but Costa Rica is not a problem to have uh, gloves because uh, you don't have any corals to speak of to, to damage, basically just rocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually uh, most people, they bring their reef hooks. Uh, so it's not a problem. Uh, I would definitely encourage wearing gloves uh, when you're diving cocos. And you also mentioned um, because it's a drift dive, want to make sure that you bring that signaling tube that uh, we call them safety sausages, signaling tubes um, that are nice and bright colored, nice and big. So that when they're on the surface, you can see it. Um, so we want to make sure maybe even bring two just in case, because you never know, maybe one, uh, you know, gets a hole in it and you don't want to be without one. So uh, that's always a good piece of equipment to take when you're traveling, whether it's at the Cocos um, destination or any destination, honestly, even diving here locally in Florida, you should always have a signaling tube because you never know uh, when you need to deploy it and make sure that the boats know where you're at. Um, some other um, equipment questions I had for you were, uh, how do you guys accommodate uh, photography, the big rig cameras? Our boats are the best when it comes to that. We got huge camera tables. We got lots of charging stations. Uh, the only thing we do now, and obviously there was a reason a couple of years ago, we know that there was something happening in California with batteries overcharging and blah, blah, blah. So basically what we're doing, we have a night watch. And if somebody uh, leaves their chargers on, because it's a huge camera tape, everybody will have space for it, not a problem on any of our boats. Uh, but if you leave your chargers on overnight, the night watchman will uh, unconnect them. Uh, there is no charging allowed in the staterooms, uh, which a lot of people used to do before. Uh, uh, but again, our boats, as again, as I, as I mentioned at the beginning, they are designed, and more and more so with, with years gone past, towards the, the photographers. I would say that 70, 80% of the people that are coming on any of our boats they are bringing their own cameras. Um, so it, you don't have to worry about that. And let me also tell you that, uh, well, I mentioned about the charging stations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's, there's absolutely no worries about that. Okay. And um, another thing that people like to do, uh, line fish, uh, the little pole spears. Some people have the ones that break down. Uh, is that allowed uh, in the glop? In, in sorry, the Galapagos in Cocos. You mean these glow sticks or whatever it is? No, no, no. The the pole spears to fish to shoot the lionfish. If there's lionfish, uh, I, I guess I don't know if you even have lionfish over there, but well, we have we them have, here. So we um, have a lot. Of, we have a lot of sharks. They learn how to eat them, but we I, I don't think we've ever seen a lionfish in Cocos. Yeah. Okay. You but if, they, if you're on other liveaboards, do they allow? Uh, you things? know that changes off and on, and I think in. Uh, in Belize and Roatan, I believe we are allowed to do it uh, unless mm -hmm. they stopped it in Belize. But, you know, these things, they come and go. So, again, that's something, you know, if you decide one day I'm going to go to Belize, I want to know if you can uh, hunt lionfish, then just check with me or our adventure planner for that destination. Yeah. But one, one more thing about lionfish in Cocos, obviously there's no coral. Mm -hmm. So they don't have the little fish to eat. So that's yeah, why that's they, true. Uh, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm not sure, you know, these, these little suckers, they, uh, they're all the way from here all the way up into, they find them in Maine. So you never know where you're going to find them next. Um, they go get around, but, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously spearfishing probably not allowed, uh, people, 
probably should leave their spearfishing guns at home. But, you know, there are maybe not in the Gresser fleets, but there are other liveaboards that do spearfishing trips. So if you're interested in those, um, contact someone at 4C or go to uh, just email info at 4 com, and I can get you those answers. Um, but they're also, um, what about like communication devices, like the Nautilus communication devices? You guys yeah. support those on your boats? Yes, everybody will get one of those. Oh, fan oh, so you you give those to us to use during the trip. Yeah. Oh, very cool. So there you go, guys. It's, you actually, it's actually not a Nautilus. It's another, I can't remember the brand name, but it basically looks like, you know, one of those things that you get in a restaurant when you went, wait for your food that starts with a pager. Yeah. Yeah. You put it in your BC pocket. That's it. Okay. Excellent. And obviously, uh, you guys don't have to worry about uh, bringing tanks because they have them on board and they also they have weights. So you do not need to travel with weight. They will uh, provide the weight for you. OK. Um, and then some other things that uh, that were asked. Um, hold on. Let me get through it here. OK. Do, 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 do. Some other things that were asked. Oh, um, when when you're there so it's like a marine uh reserve do you have to pay for like a park fee or is that included in the in the liveaboard pricing yeah it's not included in the liveaboard pricing because it has to be paid on the yeah, on board and unfortunately when i started this company it was uh i believe it was 299 dollars per person park mm -hmm. fee and then about five years ago or six years ago for whatever reason, we don't know. Even though we are transporting the park rangers back and forth and all the provisions, they decided, no, we're going to double it. So if I remember right, let me, I, I think I have it right here. I think it's its close to $500. So that's a, it's a bad thing, but everybody has to pay. It's actually $490 for a 10 night charter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, that's if you guys have ever traveled outside, even down in the Caribbean, there's definitely maybe not that big of a price tag on, but there's always marine park fees for some of these locations. So always be aware of that when you're booking a dive char charter trip, um, if you know, booking any, you know, with a booking agent, make sure that it's either included or that it's not included. So you're not caught off guard uh, when when it comes. So that's one why thing that, you know, one thing you have to keep in mind, though, is that. You know, that fee is not going in somebody's pocket, really. Mm -hmm. It actually goes to maintain the park ranger station and yep. what they're doing to protect uh, the the, uh, the park. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's actually going to a good thing, even though it, it hurts your wallet. Yes, absolutely. Because uh, that is a one, if, if you guys ever watched um, the documentary Shark Water, uh, the guy who filmed that uh, talked a lot about the... Uh, Costa Rica government there and how they try to protect the sharks and that, you know, it's it's not like the U.S. They don't have lots of boats out there to be able to patrol and keep those long liners off of there. So any any money that they get, definitely, like you said, it goes back into protecting that area and making sure that those sharks and other marine animals are kept safe um, from from some of these, uh, you know, fishermen, uh, big boats that come from out of the uh, yeah, well, I, well, what I can add to that is that if you have illegal fishermen, they usually come from other countries surrounding Costa Rica, but they go into Costa Rican waters, maybe not right at Cocos Island, but what they cannot do is they cannot go into Punta Arenas and offload, not even the Costa Ricans can go in and offload their catch. They have to go back to some other countries and offload it there because they have banned all of that uh, in Punta Arenas. Yeah. Um, and also just, I know you pointed out the things that you guys are doing on board when it comes to, you know, desanitizing, um, for during COVID, this COVID season. Uh, so, you know, what is, what are some things that people should know about, um, when they travel? There's not, you said there was not a quarantine, but like, you know, to get back into the U.S., they have to do a COVID test, um, to be able to travel back into the U.S., correct? Okay. For, for Costa Rica specifically. What I recommend everybody do, because first of all, these things, they change on a daily basis and it's all different for whichever country you're traveling from. So I don't want to say anything right now that sure. tomorrow is incorrect. What yeah. I suggest you do is go to theaggressor.com mm -hmm. and then on the very, um, let me see where it says that. It's on the very, there's the big logo, Aggressor Adventures, right underneath it, it says travel with confidence, COVID-19 travel updates. There you have up-to-date travel updates for every single destination. And if there is a change tomorrow morning, 
it will be changed shortly thereafter on our website. That's why instead of me rather telling you, yeah. because you're not traveling tomorrow, you're going to travel later this year or maybe next year, it's going to be completely different. Hopefully it will all be gone. Yes, absolutely. Well, and guys, even if you're not going on the uh, live aboard trips, um, any any trip outside the U.S., um, always, you know, go look it up, uh, have the dive travel operator help you understand what those uh, requirements are. Um, and the best thing to do is, you know, travel with a group. Uh, like I said, 4C uh, paired up with singledivers.com. And if you want in more information about our partnership, you can go to our website. I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. Sorry, Tom, I'm going to make the screen a little bit silly looking here. So here we go. All right, that's our website. That's www.force-e.com. And here's that travel page I was telling you guys about where you can find our blog about how to prepare for your next trip, five steps to travel with 4C. And then right there, travel with 4C and single divers. Go ahead and click that. It takes you over and you can learn about how to become a uh, part of that travel uh, destination groups. And like I said, we are giving, uh, we have a couple of things going on. We have things that you can travel with, take with you. Um, lots of goodies. Most of this stuff is on sale. And if you buy a hundred dollars online, you'll get a free 4C luggage tag. So that way you can, uh, you know, show everybody that you love 4C when you travel. All right. So let me go ahead and bring that up. There we go. All right. So that's, that's it for uh, the questions, Tom. Thank you so much for answering. Um, obviously, if you have more questions, you can always uh, write to us at info at force-e.com and uh, we'll get you those answers. And if you want more information about our travel trips, go to that website page, go ahead and click on our travel. And there it is. We have lots of trips. We've got a Roatan trip this year in March. We got Dominica or sorry, Dominica uh, in May and June. We've got Cozumel in July. If you want to go and do some North Carolina diving, we've got Bonaire. And then there's that um, Cocos Aggressor live aboard trip right there. If you want more info, find it in our website. Okay, guys. So like I said, if you registered and we put you in our random name picker, here it is. Are you guys ready to see who the winner is? Remember, guys, we're raffling off. This nice, beautiful uh, roller bag, Aqualung roller bag. Um, you can use it as a carry-on. So you can just throw all your essentials in there and we can get you on the plane to your destination. So let's go ahead and see who won. Here we go. Da -da 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 there we go, Patrick. Patrick, you are our winner. Go ahead and say woohoo in the comments section. And we will be emailing you. So look for that email to uh, see where you want to pick it up from. One of our four locations. Because, guys, if you, were, if you weren't tuned in earlier, we announced that we have our fourth store is now soft open. Not fully open. It's limited hours and limited services. But we definitely are open to you guys to come and check out at our Boynton Beach location. So come on down, guys. It's located at 270 North Congress Avenue. So it's right off the freeway and going to be right there where the boats go out for diving in Boynton. All right, Patrick, you're our big winner. So thank you and uh, look for that email. And Tom, thank you so much for uh, a great presentation, telling us a lot about our live aboard options, especially the Cocos trip. And we hope that you guys at home will be joining us for our live aboard adventures. Make sure that you go and you type an email in and say, I want Nicole on the trip so that I can go and I'll take pictures of you guys having fun at Cocos. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Pleasure.